Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, I hope that you have been enjoying the Dream Interpretations series because what we have done, I'm so excited, what we have done is we have taken that series and we have put it in book formation. Uh, we don't have a release date yet because we're going to go through and we're going to do some editing and some tweaking and we're also going to add some additional dreams and visions as the Lord allows us to do so within that book. So look out for dream interpretations through the scriptures. It's going to be released this year 2022 and we'll let you know when you can order your copy. We are still on schedule to release the keys of promises. This is part two of the promises of God, the components of the Old and New Testament. We are so in depth with the keys of promises, let me tell you. There are certain areas in this particular book where we're going to uh, do a commentary on the keys identified and we also have some reflective questions. So you can take this as an individual study or even a group study. Once again, we are on schedule to release the Keys of Promises. So look for that date because it is coming soon where you can start to order the Keys of Promises, a work and labor of love. All right, what I wanna share with you today I'm excited about the Word of God. Do you ever just get so excited when you come across passages of Scripture and the Holy Spirit just begins to give you a revelation of that Scripture? So let me tell you what happened to me on yesterday. Yesterday, we are in one book doing some edits, but He's giving me a revelation to go into another book. So here I am, I have both manuscripts, and I am entering notes per manuscript. And I kept saying, I don't know how I'm able to do this, but to God be the glory. So uh, thank God, thank God for uh, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. What I want to share with you is something that I came across yesterday. And it is over in the book of Daniel. You know, we've been studying Daniel for a while. But I came across this right here. And I'm going to tie it in again. Uh, tied in with Joshua. Over in the book of Joshua. Over in Daniel, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse. It says, yet, I heard, yet heard I the voice of his words. Let me back up. It says in the eighth verse, therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision and there remained no strength in me for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face turned toward the ground. Yet heard I the voice of his words. Do you not know that even in dreams and visions, we can fail to hear what God is saying to us? Because of we, we could be so caught up in what's going on in the dream or vision that we can fail to hear what he is saying so I am instructing myself my spirit man that when I go to sleep and 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 just to pray Lord if you desire to visit me in my dreams and visions that I have clarity for what you want to say to me I have clarity that I could hear, that I can comprehend what you're saying to me. He says, 
Daniel says, yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Here is where Daniel is getting a vision from an angel to explain to him, to give him skill and understanding of what he saw. So when I came across that, I said, oh my God. But let me tie it in another way. As I am looking over at Joshua, the second chapter, Rahab says unto the two spies, verse 9 says, And she said unto them, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Verse 10 says, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. And so, when I read this this morning, And I'm also looking over at Daniel. It is important to hear the voice of the Lord's words. Amen. Hear the voice of the Lord's words. I'm not talking about our words. I'm not talking about carnal fleshly words. But hear the voice of the Lord's words because they carry a weight they carry a urgency even in the calmness of his voice they carry weight and they carry a urgency so when you hear the voice of the Lord's words it is time to take action it is time to pay attention because he's speaking and he's speaking to you so let's let let's look at that again because that's so good. We have to hear the voice of his words. Daniel 10 and 9 says, Yet heard I the voice of his words. That means I wasn't listening to just any old thing. That means that what he said, it grabbed my attention. What he said, it, it, it brought some focus to what I needed to look at what he said brought some order to my life what he said brought some deliverance to my life what he said it brought some change to my heart it brought a renewal to my mind yet I heard the voice of his words the voice of his words will do something in our lives it will shift us it will renew us it will restore us It will bring into reality the promises that he has given unto us when we hear the voice of his words. And so that tells me that some words are silent. That means that some words don't carry any weight. That means that some words that are carnal, they have no significance. They can't move me. They can't shift me. They can't deliver me. But the voice of his words, they mean something. The voice of his words are faithful. The voice of his words are true. And guess what? The voice of his words will not return unto him void. They will accomplish that which he sent them out to do. So, whose voice are you hearing today? Whose voice do you actually hear? Are you listening to your own inner voice? Have we consulted what God would have us to do? What are the plans of God concerning our individual lives? How they heard. That's right. How they heard about what God had done. They heard the voice of God's words. If you're just tuning in, tuning in back into uh, the balance of life, we did have a, have a brief interruption, but to God be the glory, 
Listen, we're beginning to pray and shut down the facets and the attacks of the enemy that would come in to try and interrupt what God would have us to share with you today. So let me just recap really quick, just in case uh, we blanked out and you didn't get a chance to hear what we were sharing. Over in Daniel, where he proclaimed, yet heard I the voice of his words. The words of God carry weight. His words are action. His words are faithful. They are true. And whatsoever he has sent his word out to do, it will accomplish that which he sent it. And so when you hear the voice of his words, something is supposed to take place in your life. You will get a revelation. Deliverance can take place in your life. Healing can take place in your life. And the day that you hear his voice, heart not your heart. He said, because yet I heard the voice of his words. Meaning I got a revelation. Meaning that his words shifted something within me and in the atmosphere. And when I say what he says, oh, what a mighty good time we're going to have in the Lord. Rahab declared over in Joshua, the second chapter, the 10th verse. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you. And when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these words, our hearts did melt. Something happens. As soon as you hear the voice of his words, as soon as you receive a revelation, as soon as you get a revelatory revelation of what God is saying, when you read the scriptures and the Holy Spirit begins to give you a revelation of what you heard, your eyes are now enlightened. You have now come into the truth. That's just good in my spirit. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I would love to extend an invitation to each and every one of you to join us for virtual Bible study on tonight, 7 o'clock p.m., Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey. You can find us on uh, the church's ministry page, Facebook Live, 7 o'clock p.m. tonight. Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey. Hey, and I am so excited that we are in the process of finalizing everything for the Keys of Promises. That's right. The Keys of Promises is part two of the promises of God, the components of the Old and New Testament. We have been instructed by the Holy Spirit to go just a little bit different in this particular book. As we are looking at different passages of scripture, we went intensively within the book of Daniel after each chapter, we have included keys identified as well as a section on review questions. So you can do this as an individual study as well as a group study. We're almost at our deadline and so I am so very, very excited about releasing this particular book. And for the past seven days, we did a series on dream interpretations through the scriptures. Well, it's in book form. We have our proof and we're doing some editing. We are also asking the Holy Spirit which additional dreams and visions that we can add in this particular book, dream interpretations through the scriptures. Look for the release of that. Also, we do have another release. Listen, we have so many projects that we want to release in this year. 
and we are gearing up and we are prepared. We have a stack in front of us. I'm so excited. Sounding the alarm. Sounding the alarm is a mantleship on the prophetic. It is a teaching of the mantleship of the prophetic. And we're going to cover subjects such as what is a prophet? What is a watchman? What are the responsibilities, the cultivating, the development, what to listen out for? And so we're going to release that this year. Another publication that we're going to release this year is going to be a Bible study series tangible truth Bible study series that particular series has three books the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit the fulfillments of Jesus Christ and the oracles of the Holy Spirit and so we just named off six book projects for this year I'm geared up I'm ready yes I am taking naps when necessary and I thank God for the nights that he allows me to sleep to be rejuvenated and you know what I'm actually enjoying this part of uh, ministry this is a, a another uh, shift in ministry for us so we're so excited so look for those publications you're always going to hear it first here on the balance of life that's right you're always going to hear what we're up to here on the balance of life and then we will share it on our social media platform as well as through television ministry all right so today aren't you excited can you hear the excitement in my voice God is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be adored. I encourage you wholeheartedly. Take some time out of your busy schedule and spend some time in the presence of the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into that sacred place of worship. Allow Him to lead and guide you in that sacred place of prayer and on what word to read. Spend some time with the Lord. He wants to spend some time with us. There is so much that he wants to reveal to us uh, through dreams and visions, through, through the word of God, of course. He wants to communicate with us. He wants to hear from us. And he wants to speak to us. And in that, sometimes it, it is just so good just to adore him, just to get in his presence to sing unto the Lord a new song. Have you ever just said, Holy Spirit, give me a new song to sing unto the Lord? Oh, he desires, he inhabits the praises of his people. I encourage you to try that. Say, Holy Spirit, give me a new song to sing unto the Lord. Oh, a song that is just between me and and my Lord, a song that I don't get to sing for anybody else. This becomes a personal thing. This is only a song that I sing to Him when I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. When I'm abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, I want to adore Him there. I want to love Him there. I want to magnify His name in that place. That's just a place just for me and Him. Nobody else is invited. Neither can I share the details of what goes on in that secret place. But I encourage you, ask the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.26 truly tells us, For we know not what we ought to pray for. The Holy Spirit, He knows our, our infirmities. He knows our weaknesses. That's what infirmities are. L ask Him to lead and guide you. In your worship, in your prayer, and reading the Word of God. And He will do it. He will do it. He can help us communicate with God. That's right. The Holy Spirit can help us communicate with God. If we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our worship, in our prayer, and in reading the Word, He is going to help us communicate with God. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I'm excited. I'm excited on this February the 23rd, 2022. We are well into this year. And you might as well get excited about it, excited about it. You might as well rejoice in the Lord. You might as well say, Lord, I thank you. 
I don't understand it, but I thank you. Let me say this also. Do you not know that when you're in that secret place of the Most High and you are releasing your worship, that that worship is allowing other things to be released in your life? Mm -hmm. Your worship. Your worship allows things to be released in your life. Sometimes we just need to get in the presence of the Lord and don't ask for anything. Just come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and bless his name. That is according to the scripture. So sometimes it's just good to, to come into his presence just to love him, just to worship him, just to praise his name. Don't ask for anything. Don't ask for nothing. Just say thank you. Just say, Lord, I love you. It's good every now and then. And in that way, every time you come into his presence, it's not because you want something. Because if we only come in his presence when we want something, we won't come in his presence when things are going good. Why? Because we got what we need. And so we might feel like we don't need to come in his presence. We might feel like we don't need to talk to him. It's time to make a change in our lives concerning our time and in the presence of the Lord. And so when I came across this word on yesterday... And it was it was just so amazing how just I'm supposed to being one book in editing, but yet and still I'm getting some things for another book. And so I'm juggling notes. And I came across this word. Daniel said, yet I heard the voice of his words that even though he was trembling even though he had a a a a fear which is it wasn't a fear of him being scared it was a fear of humility that he didn't feel he was worthy to to even be in the presence of the angel of the lord and out of all of that, he could hear the voice of his words. He can hear the urgency of his words. When is the last time you experienced the voice of God's words? I'm talking about it really grabbed hold of you. It, his words really got your attention. When is the last time you heard the word and you received a revelation that it shifted you, that it renewed your mind, that it brought a praise up out of your belly, that it brought a rejoicing to your soul? When is the last time you rejoiced over the word of God? It wasn't just, uh, oh, I've heard that before, or, or, or I heard somebody else say that. When is the last time you heard the voice of the Word of God? Because, yes, the Word of God has a voice, and that voice is Jesus. Oh, yes. Remember, the Word came down in the likeness of flesh, and the Word spoke. When is the last time you had an experience with the Word? When is the last time you had an encounter? When is the last time that the Word that you heard spoken brought a refreshing and a renewal that it rejuvenated you? That it brought reconciliation? When you hear the voice of the Word of God, something 
should happen in your life. Something should transpire. Something should transfer. The word should transfer life into you. It should transfer something. The voice of his words. Take a look at that. That is that is just so profound. That's so good. That it is over in Daniel. Daniel the 10th chapter. And it is uh, located... Let me flip my Bible back because I'm also over in Joshua. Daniel, the 10th chapter, 9th verse. That's just some good stuff right there. And then we're also lining it up with Joshua, the 2nd chapter, where Rahab had an experience. The people had an experience as a whole. She wasn't the only one that had the experience. Because she said in the 10th verse, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water. Then you go down to the 11th verse, And as soon as we heard these things, That means that they heard some things before, And it brushed right over them. It, it, it didn't hold any significance. It didn't hold any weight. You know how sometimes you can hear a thing and it doesn't hold any weight. It doesn't hold any significance. But when you hear the voice of the word of God, when you get a revelation of the word of God, there's a difference in that. There's a difference when you get a revelation of the word of God. I encourage you today to begin to pray over what you hear. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fine-tune your hearing and your eyesight to give you a revelation of the Word of God. And when you go to sleep, before you go to sleep, pray that you hear that if God desires to speak to you in a dream or vision, that you can hear Him, that you can hear what is being said in the dream and in the vision. You know our motto, we love you without measure simply because we believe in the potential of you. Have a blessed day.